Good morning, everyone. We are gathering together for our Sunday Obednissa. Uh, today is the pre-feast of the exaltation of the most precious cross and the feast of the founding of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. And so we will be celebrating the Obednissa this morning. And then after just a short pause to prepare for Vespers, we'll go into Vespers for the eve of the feast. And for our faithful who would like to attend liturgy, we will be celebrating divine liturgy for the Feast of the Exaltation uh, at church at 9 a.m. So please use the sign up process if you would like to join us for uh, the divine liturgy on Monday to celebrate this, the second of the great feast of our new liturgical year. So please join us in prayer. God cleanse me and have mercy upon me. God cleanse me and have mercy upon me. God cleanse me and have mercy upon me. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, and have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church is of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For it is our holy house, and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our most blessed Metropolitan Deacon, welcome tenants of the Diocese of New England, for the Honorable Priest of the Diocese in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the President of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. From ever reading our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. For unto you are to all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Blessed are you, O Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless this holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Blessed are you, O Lord. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. 
commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our Lord. For yours is the majesty, and yours are the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. Put not your trust in princes, in sons of men in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to his earth. On that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he himself is the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his family forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he will bring to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. O Lord, be God, in Son, and immortal Word of God, who for our salvation will to be incarnate, of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, who without change became man and was crucified, O Christ our God, trampling and death by death, who are one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all their life unto Christ our God. For you are a good God who loves mankind, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In your kingdom remember us, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Wisdom, let us attend. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, O Son of God, who rose from the dead, save us who sing to you. the faithful praise and worship the word go eternal with the father and the spirit born of the virgin for our salvation for he will to be lifted up on the cross in the flesh to endure death and to raise the dead by his glorious resurrection. You have revealed the beauty of the dwelling place of your glory on earth, to be like the splendor of the heavenly firmament, O Lord, through the prayers of the Theotokos, strengthen it forever and ever, and accept our supplication, which we ceaselessly offer to you therein, the life and resurrection of all. We offer in supplication the life creating cross of your goodness, O Lord, which you have granted to us, although we are unworthy through the Theotokos. Save all orthodox Christians, O only lover of man. You descended into hell, O my Savior, shattering its gates as Almighty, resurrecting the dead as Creator, and destroying the sting of death. You have delivered Adam from the curse, O lover of man. And we cry to you, O Lord, save us. Glory, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The church has been revealed to be a heaven filled with light, which enlightens all the faithful. Standing within it, we cry, Establish this house, O Lord. For holy are you, O our God, and unto you is Christ glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages of 
attend the peace be unto all and to your spirit wisdom the prokimenon is in the sixth tone O lord save your people and bless your inheritance O lord save your people and bless your inheritance to you O lord will i call O my god be not silent to me O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. The Brookhemenon in the fourth tone, holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Wisdom. The reading is from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Galatians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, see with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus be with your spirit. Amen. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul that to spare you I came no more to Corinth, not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. The reading is from the epistle to the Hebrews. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, and he who built all things is God. Peace be unto your reader. And to your spirit, alleluia, in the first tone. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I have exalted one chosen out of my people. shall defend him and my arm shall strengthen him. The foundations are in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Jerusalem. So, Master, who loves mankind with the pure light of your divine knowledge, open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of your gospel teachings, and plant also in us the fear of your blessed commandments that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well pleasing unto you. 
For you are the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto you we ascribe glory, together with your Father, your Father, who is from everlasting, your all holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom, let us attend, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. And to your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Theologian. Glory to you, Lord, glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus said, No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And Jesus spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged for a marriage for his sons and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, and my oxen and fatted cattle are killed. All things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So the servants went out to the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, Find him hand and foot, take him away and cast him out into outer darkness. There there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. At that time, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea and Philippi, he saw his disciples and asked them, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some said John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Glory to you, Lord, glory to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ, glory forever. We are together this morning on the pre-feast of the exaltation of the most precious cross. By the way these days fall in this particular year, we have the opportunity to celebrate today the pre-feast on Sunday and then tomorrow on Monday to celebrate the feast itself. 
and it is a wonderful opportunity that this is the case because there is so much of an interrelatedness between this pre-feast and the feast of the exaltation itself and that interlinking has to do with the founding of the church of the holy sepulcher in jerusalem because constantine who was the first emperor who passed the edict of milan the first emperor who moved the capital to Constantinople, passed the Edict of Milan that called for freedom of religious practice, which meant in part that the Christians could no longer be persecuted as they were. And so in doing so, Constantine sent his mother, Helen, to Jerusalem. And her goal was to try to find the precious cross and if she were able to find it to build the church to house the cross and to mark the place of Jesus crucifixion. And so Helen went and they found that the pagans had overrun the whole area and put up pagan temples to pagan gods covering over everything in that local area. And so St. Helen began excavating, trying to find the original buildings that were there, the original structures that were there, and again, looking for the cross. As tradition has it, three crosses were uncovered in her excavation. And so a bishop at the time, I believe his name was Macarius, but I'm not 100% sure, uh, but he advised that someone who had died be placed on each of the three crosses. And the understanding that the bishop had is that when the deceased person was placed on the cross of Christ, they might be raised from the dead. And in fact, as tradition has it, that's what happened. When they placed this deceased person on the cross of our Lord, he came back to life. And so now St. Helen had the most precious cross, and she set about building the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem. So you can see by this portrayal how the finding of the cross is so linked to the building of the church in Jerusalem. Not too many years later, we have accounts from a traveler, Egeria, who traveled from the Roman provinces to the Holy Land and recorded her experience of the church there, of worship in the church, the psalmody that was proclaimed, the peace and the joy of the celebration of the services in that church. And so St. Helen is remembered for finding the precious cross and for building this holy church so that the cross of Christ could once again be venerated as we will be doing in just a short while as we celebrate the Feast of the Exaltation itself. As we listen to their, there are many scripture readings today, but as we listen to them, among them are some marvelous passages that uh, we would be remiss not to elevate and to focus on. The first being in John's gospel. I remember growing up, seeing on many semis and cars, John 3.16. Uh, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believed in him would have eternal life. What a loving, loving expression this particular verse is, especially as we prepare for the exaltation of the cross. This feast of the cross being the one with the cross of the resurrected Lord, the resurrected Lord. And finally, in the second of the three gospel readings today is the account of the king who prepared the wedding feast, who prepared for people to come together and to celebrate with him. We could certainly see this as our father calling us to the celebration of the Eucharist, calling us to the veneration 
of the wood of the most precious cross. And so brothers and sisters, we are called today to come forward to prepare to venerate the wood of the precious cross that was discovered by St. Helen, to prepare to celebrate the Holy Eucharist as we will be doing on Monday morning for the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, that we may know experientially, not cognitively, but experientially through the sacramental life of the church, that expression of God's love for us, that he so loved the world that he sent his son, that those of us who believe in him should be saved. But brothers and sisters, let us give thanks for this loving expression of a father for all of us as his children, sending his son so that we might have life in him. So we prepare to continue with our Obednesa this morning and then after that to celebrate Vespers with the opportunity of veneration of the cross on Monday in our church. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ, glory forever. Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great goodness, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our most blessed metropolitan teak on all companions of the Diocese of New England, who are priests, deacons, and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the president of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable Holy Orthodox Patriarchs and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of our Holy House, for all of our parents and brethren, the Orthodox part of this life before us, especially the Archpriest Joseph, Robert, Arkady, Sonia, and, and Robert, and who here and in all the world by asleep in the Lord. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, all the brethren of our community, those that we hold in our hearts and in our minds, for those who are sick and suffering, especially the former Metropolitan Theodosia, Smakishki, Natasha, Anastasia, Macrina, and Cynthia Elizabeth, the servants of God, Robert, Victoria, Charles, Anastasia, John, Roseanne, Elaine, Catherine, Delia, Maria, Corey, Damien, Joseph, Kira, Louise, Lucy, David, Anna, Carol, Dorothy, Anne Marie, Nona, for those who are suffering from the coronavirus, Stephen, Carol Ann, Ron, Megan, Kevin, Madalena, and the servant of God, Luca, and you, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray that the Lord our God, in his mercy and providential care for us, will call forth for our Diocese of New England, a true shepherd of wisdom and strength, blessing us with an archpastor to care for the well-being of our diocese and to unite his faithful people in a zealous confession of the Orthodox faith in loving service to one another and a bright witness to the glory of his holy name. We beg you, Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in our holy and all venerable house, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present to await your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful God and love mankind, and to you we ask kind glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
mercy. O God, almighty Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, visible and invisible, in your ineffable goodness, look down upon us, your people gathered in your holy name. Be our helper and defender in this day of affliction. You know our weakness, you hear our cry and repentance and contrition of heart. O Lord, who loves mankind, deliver us from the present threat of the coronavirus. Send your angel to watch over and protect us. Grant health and recovery to those suffering from this virus. Guide the hands of physicians, nurses, all of our caregivers, the chaplains ministering to them. We pray for those developing vaccines and treatments and preserve those who are healthy. Enable us to continue to serve our suffering brothers and sisters in peace that together we may glorify your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Remember us, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Remember us, O Master, when you come in your kingdom. Remember us, O Holy One, when you come in your kingdom. The heavenly choir sings to you and cries, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Come unto him and be enlightened, and your faces shall not be ashamed. The heavenly choir sings to you and cries, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The choir of holy angels, archangels, with all the powers of heaven, sing your praises and do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. I believe in one God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God, remit, pardon, and forgive our sins, whether voluntary or involuntary, whether by words or deeds, whether in knowledge or in ignorance, whether by day or night, whether in mind or thought, Forgive us all these, for you are good and love mankind. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you 
yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. O oh, all holy trinity, mighty one in essence, kingdom undivided, origin of all good things, be graciously inclined also to us sinners, establish us, give understanding to our hearts, and purge away all our vileness, enlighten our minds that we may glorify, sing praises, and adore you, and to say, One is holy, one is the Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord henceforth and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and covets many days that he may enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He kept all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants, none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. It is truly neat to let you who gave birth to God ever blessed most Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Father, bless. 
May he who rose from the dead Christ, our true God, whose exaltation pre-feast we commemorate today of the holy, most holy mother of God, of our holy, glorious, and laudable apostles, of the founding of the church of the holy sepulcher in Jerusalem that we commemorate today, of the holy and righteous ancestor of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves mankind. Amen. So we prepare to uh, finish our obedience and to begin Vespers. There'll be just a momentary pause while we make adjustments here uh, before starting Vespers. Before we do that, though, we do want to take a moment to uh, pray for those that we've been asked to remember in prayer uh, and who are celebrating today. So among those that we'll be remembering for memory eternal, uh, is Matryoshka Claire's mentor, uh, whose name is Robert Bird. He passed away, uh, and she was uh, hoping to get to funeral services uh, for him. And I mentioned this, one, because he was a mentor for Matryoshka Claire, but two, that there is actually a link back to Holy Transfiguration Church. Uh, Matryoshka Claire relayed that in the, uh, the series of uh, photos depicting his life, there is a picture of him uh, in his, I believe his first marriage that were outside the steps of Holy Transfiguration Church. So he was married in our church. I believe he participated in the uh, OCF at one time. So we will ask uh, memory eternal for the servant of God, Robert. And also today we are celebrating Susan Papadimitris's birthday. And so we'll ask God to grant her many years. Uh, I want to thank uh, Deacon Mark and Matryoshka Claire and family for singing the responses this morning for our Obednitsa. Uh, the Crosby family sang at liturgy Saturday morning and Susan will be singing uh, the Vesper service in just a few short minutes. So uh, later today at noontime, we will be uh, the weather holding up, uh, going to Evergreen Cemetery uh, for noontime. So after Vespers, I'll be uh, preparing to make my way to the cemetery so we will not uh, have our virtual coffee hour today. Uh, and also, again, as was mentioned earlier, uh, for those who would like to attend liturgy on Monday morning, we will be celebrating the liturgy for the Feast of the Exaltation of the Most Precious Cross. I will also be taking a few days away during this coming week. And so, as is reported in the uh, weekly bulletin, uh, Deacon Mark will be taking care of uh, the Obednissa a week from today. Um, and also will be leading the Vespers for the OCF community on Thursday night. Uh, for pastoral calls, uh, I have given both the phone number and the email uh, for Father Patrick Burns, who has graciously agreed to cover uh, any pastoral calls uh, during this week. So I'll be uh, away from approximately the 15th to the 22nd. Uh, and we will plan to have Vespers on Wednesday evening of that week as we're commemorating the uh, Martyrs Juvenali and Peter the Aleut, some of our American saints. Uh, so God bless and be with you. We'll ask uh, memory eternal and many years and take a brief pause and come back uh, for our Vesper service. So I hope you will stay with us. Grant rest eternal and blessed repose, O Lord, to the souls of your servants of God, the Archpriest Joseph, Robert, Arkady, Sonia, and, and the newly reposed Robert, who have fallen asleep, and make their memory to be eternal.
peaceful and prosperous life, health, salvation, furtherance, and all good things, and all thy blessings unto the servant of God, Susan, celebrating her birthday, and protect and preserve her for many years. Grant you many years, God grant you many years, God grant you many, many years. Thank you. So in a few short minutes, we'll be starting our Vespers for the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. <laughs> 